Hello, welcome to another video. The only problem with this problem is if you have a problem knowing what this is, because as soon as you know what this is, it becomes a lot easier for you to compute. And it is a definite integral. At the end of the day, you would plug in zero and four. And then the calculation, it's, not, it, it's manageable, but it's not fast. But at the end of this video, I'm going to show you that this question is not meant to be computed. It is meant to be decided. So the answer to this problem is zero. And I'm going to show you why it's zero without doing any work. But first, in case the boundaries are not zero and four, or it is an indefinite integral, at least we need to know how to compute the indefinite integral of this. But if it's a definite integral, just looking at it, you know the answer is gonna be zero. And I'm gonna show you why at the end. So, let's get into the video. The very first thing you wanna do is rewrite this in a way that you understand. This is the notation for the combination expression. That is, from x number of items, choose five. So it is x combination five. So we know that x combination five is the same expression as we write this way. So this is supposed to confuse you if you're not used to that, but this is how you write x combination five. And what does this mean? This simply means x factorial divided by five factorial times x minus five factorial. That's what this expression is. And this is a pre-calculus concept. So now from here, we can compute this. And by the time we get the polynomial that is generated from this, we can go back here and take the integral. That's it. So that's why I meant what I meant by the only problem with this problem is that you have a problem knowing what this means. Okay, so here we can say that x factorial over 5 factorial times x minus 5 factorial will be x times x minus. We can actually say it's x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 4 times x minus 5 factorial. Let's squeeze that in there. There's a factorial here. And we're going to divide it by 5 factorial. We know 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 120. You can always write that as 120. And x minus 5 factorial, we just leave it because we see it here. x minus 5 factorial. So this cancels this out so that what we are left with is 1 over 120 times, what do we have inside? We're going to have this expression, which is x. You know what? Just to make life a lot easier for ourselves, I'm going to multiply this out now immediately and multiply this out. And I'm going to keep this so we can get our answer, okay, faster. So this is going to be x squared minus x. Okay, that's 1. And then I'm going to distribute this. This is going to be x squared minus 5x plus 6. x squared minus 5x plus 6. And then there's one here, x minus 4. Okay. Ah, and that's it. So this is what you're supposed to integrate. We're supposed to go back here and go plug it in here when we're done. So let's keep working. This is equal to combination 5 is 1 over 120 multiplied by, let's see which one to distribute first. Let's do this. Let's distribute these ones. So this is going to be x cubed. Okay, let's do this quickly. So this is minus, this is going to be 4x squared. And I have um, minus 5x squared minus 5x squared. And I have, um, this is going to be plus 20x plus 20x. And I have um, plus 6x, and I have um, minus 24. Okay, that's what I have 
from this multiplication, and now I need to multiply by x squared minus x, x squared minus x. Okay, this is equal to 1 over 120 multiplied by, this is going to be, let's clean this up, okay? This is going to be x cubed. Um, how many x squared do we have? Oh, minus, this is going to be, is this correct? x cubed minus 4x squared. Yes, minus 5x squared. So it's going to be minus 9x squared. And then we have 20x, that's plus 26x minus 24 multiplied by x squared minus x. Okay, let's go one more time. This is 1 over 120 times. This is going to be um, x, this is going to be x to the fifth, x to the fifth minus x to the fourth. This is minus 9x to the fourth. This is minus, this is plus um, 9x cubed, and this multiplies this plus 26x cubed. This multiplies this minus 26x squared. This multiplies this minus 24x squared, and this multiplies this plus 24x. Okay, now we just need to combine all the terms together, and in this case, you know what, I'm just going to write the integral. So we're gonna say the integral from zero to four of this combination, x combination five dx will be one over 120 times the integral. So I pull the 120 behind the integral here and then we write x to the fifth. Um, and then this would be minus 10x to the fourth, minus 10x to the fourth. And then we combine these two, it's going to be plus 35x cubed. And we combine these two, it's going to be minus 50x squared. And we have plus 24x. And we put dx here. Okay, so this is going to be 1 over 120. And the integral of this is going to be, let's do this. So this is going to be x to the 6th over 6 minus... 10x to the fifth over 5, which is going to make this just 2x to the fifth. Okay. And this is going to be plus, um, this is 35x to the fourth over 4. And this is going to be minus um, 50x cubed over 3. And this is be plus 24x squared over 2, which is just 12x squared. And we're going to evaluate from 0 to 4. Okay, this is what a smart kid would do, but not what the brilliant kid would do. The brilliant kid wouldn't do any of these calculations because of what I'm about to show you. No, not, not now, after now. So what happens is you plug in your 4, you're going to get some titanic numbers, and at the end of the day, what's inside this parenthesis is going to end up being 0. Okay, I'm just going to write the numbers out so you see them. Okay, we've got our zero here, and that's all we were looking for. Your answer was supposed to be zero. Okay, how do I know? This is how I know. This is what I was talking about. If you're familiar with this type of function, you would know when the integral would be equal to zero because it just has the symmetry that you could see. Now, let me disable the other graphs and focus on the one that we just worked on. Look at this. This is the graph of the function we just integrated. And going from 0 to 4, can you see that it has the symmetry about the line x equals 2? And if you take the integral before that and you compare it to the integral on the other side, they cancel each other out, so your answer will always be 0. You notice that because it was x choose 5, the symmetry was at 5 minus 1 divided by 2, which gave us 2. So because we went from 0 to 4, just one short of where we're going, this is what we get. Now, let me disable this. Let me show you the one for 7. Do you notice the same thing? So if you're already used to this kind of function and the graph, what it looks like, once you see the integral, you know it's going to be 0, just like using the principle of the odd function like going from minus 1 to 1 for 
an odd function, you know you don't have to integrate, you just need to know the function is odd and you're going to get your answer. Look at the same thing. Let's disable this and show the 9. Look at that. It goes from 0 all the way to 8 and that's what you see here too. Let's see what 3 shows us. x choose 3. Oh, this is the clearest example. Can you see this? The clearest example. The line of symmetry is right here in the middle. Is that 1, which is 3 minus 1 divided by 2. So it's right there. So from experience, you could tell that your answer is 0 and you didn't have to do any integration if this was a computation, which actually it was. It was one of the qualifying questions at the 2023, I think, MIT Integration B. And let's see what this graph would look like. The first one. Let's disable this. Oh, it's just a straight line running through 0. So that also will be 0 if, well, again, that will be at 0. Okay. So these are all the graphs. You see the symmetry? So now you see that experience is better than being smart. Because if you're smart, you just do what smart people do. But if you are experienced in this, you don't do what smart people do. You don't do anything, you just write the answer. Okay, let's get back to the board. So now you see what I was talking about. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.